Hey Smokers, Gerardo One here, and today we're going to be continuing our never-ending quest to get a better motherboard, or a better setup for the Ultimate DOS machine. Now, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> it's gone through several iterations and a very multi-part series of videos trying to get a workable unit that wasn't just a pile of parts on the desk like there is right now. So as you can currently see we have um, this 486 motherboard that used to be in a case but I took it out. We're now running off of a single compact flash card that is precisely the right size for a FAT16 partition. Or can I go up to 2 gigs? I can't remember. Jesus Christ. Anyway, when every time I try to partition something like that in F-Disk, it always caps out at 512 megabytes. I don't remember why that's the limitation, or that's why it wants to do it that way, or I've just held on to that knowledge of 500 megs is the right amount of storage from misreading a Wikipedia article like 12 years ago. Very well could be. Um, I'm not sure... I'm not going to fix it because I can't go any higher than 512 now, so whatever. Now we're not actually going to be sticking with this motherboard, we're actually going to be swapping it out. But we're going to be swapping it out to something that uh, is pretty unusual, and I'll be damned if I can ever find a damn, a damn case for it, because it, it looks almost nothing like this. In fact, it's not even one board. So right now... Um, I sort of have to show you a little bit of stuff here because um, it's a little bit of a janky setup using this motherboard. We won't have to worry about this again, hopefully. Um, the problem is, is that I don't have the CMOS battery for this. I don't even have the CMOS battery for the other one. It's going to be pretty annoying. But the, the reason I needed it was because I needed to figure out what the sectors, heads, and uh, cylinders uh, was for this thing because you can't, this won't see it unless you know precisely the values. Now I already have the values, but there's an interesting way um, that I was able to get them. And uh, I'm going to show you that right now, uh, just because I thought it was kind of interesting. And I uh, did a quick Google search to see if I could figure out what the, the values were for this drive. And uh, I found a little tool from some cool guy on Vogons. And uh, he made a tool that is able to read this and tell you exactly the information you need. I tried plugging this into my main computer and tried to use a command prompt to give me some values, but they weren't accurate at all whatsoever. So let's start by booting this up to MS-DOS. We can't boot this right now instantly without entering the sectors, heads, and cylinders and all that. So we need this so that we can launch this which has our little tool that tells us uh, all about the drive. I got uh, some better speakers set up, um, as you can see. Now as you can see it says CMOS battery stay low, type mismatch, whatever. So I'm going to resume and we're just going to, I'm going to show you where we need to plug in the stuff. Now I've done this in a couple other videos where I had, uh, I took a picture of the screen with all the right information. Most of the time for drives um, like this one, um, it has the uh, heads, sectors, and cylinders printed on the drive itself. So you can just copy them and put them into something like this. Now normally you'd only have to do this once when you first set up your computer because back in those days your uh, CMOS battery wasn't dead and your computer was brand new. So I'll have to enter them in manually but since I don't know the values yet um, see there's cylinders, heads, sectors. So, get out of this, and I'm going to let it boot to, well, actually, I do need to change something first, because right now it thinks it's a 1.2, um, here we go, 1.2 megabyte, five and a quarter, there we go. So, nothing is saved if, uh, if it loses power. So now I'm going to boot MS-DOS off of the, my only and very old MS-DOS install, see, the, uh, I'm gonna call it a CD, 
I guess it's because I've installed DOS with the CD for so long that uh, that's just how it goes now. So we're going to exit out, exit out, and we'll get our prompt. And we'll swap disks off of the DOS disk down to this, which I forgot what was on it. So some of the files that are on here are from the Adobe Premiere install. As you can see, they all have underscores showing that I'm assuming they're compressed files or to differentiate them and keep them from being opened by normal software by accident. I really don't know. But uh, I'll explain this through this file in a little bit. Uh, but the IDE info is thing is what we need here. These aren't really related to what I'm doing, but it's the reason why this computer already has a compact flash card and why I already have this all set up. Because um, I was trying to do something with this computer prior to this video. So, uh, IDE info. I typed it wrong. Alright, and so here we have it. Thank you, Thomas J. Newman. Copyright 1991. <laughs> Good lord, this is old. But, it, even though it's really old, it's able to find the correct information about our drive. So all we have to do is plug that in, and it'll... Um, detect it no problem. It even gets the proper model number here, um, or model identifier or whatever. Silicon Systems 512 meg. Silicon Systems on it, so... Now, of course, actual formatted capacity less. 488 megs. I don't care. So all we have to do is... I already have this, the picture of this, so we'll just go back and... Uh, it still remembers this because we haven't lost power yet, but... Um, 993... Head 16, sectors 63, like always, 489. So we'll back out of this. If all goes well, we won't have to do that again. But now, I don't need any disks in the drive because it'll be able to boot off of this, which is now blinking because it's loading things. Run running my now, oh my god, how old is this? Um, I don't know, six-year-old batch file now. Because I first put this whole thing together back in 2013 um, with the... If you want to go way back on my channel, it's like the Ultimate DOS Machine, I don't know, Remastered, Restore, I don't even remember the name of it, to be honest. Now, this has a couple problems since I... The reason I switched to the Compact Flash was because I started having problems with the hard disk. It was not able to boot Windows 3, however, it was before, but then I just removed the network card and then it could boot. So it might have not actually even have been a problem with the hard disk, but I switched to it anyway just because Compact Flash is better than a mechanical drive. You know, you know me. <coughs> Windows, of course, can be started, the Win command, and it takes a fucking long amount of time, as you probably remember. And this is just because it can't find the adapter. The 486 is really slow. I've never seen it go this slow before. When I switched over to the 486, I was like, what am I waiting for? And as you can see, we can't even use WaveSynth because it requires a Pentium Fast Processor or better. Luckily, we'll be fixing that problem pretty soon. As you can see, the sound still works. Uh, video still works. The capture card, I have no idea if it still works. Now, we're gonna probably fuck everything up and switch this over to a computer that, oh my god. So, let me just show you those MIDI files. Can I need the floppy disk? Okay, so here we are in Pro Sound again. So, here are the files SS1, 2, and 3. I don't. So, here we go, here's this. Okay, so we got a bunch of tracks here for distortion, the guitar, finger bass. So, these are all the samples that I wanted to use. Um, for so that it would play in the back, I'll just show you. So you can see the MIDI activity here. It's gonna play through all of them one note at middle. Well, it's not middle C. It was actually a low C for some reason, but it plays through all of them, and then I capture all the samples, and then yeah, there's another one, and then which the ones that I like that weren't freaking distorted by the recording process, I use and put into open my plug tracker. So that's what I was using this computer for before, just having it play through all these I had recorded and then um, have to dig through all of them 
and label all them into individual files. It was a pretty arduous process that took like about a week. So I'm glad I didn't make a video about it. At this point, we don't really have a reason to have the computer on anymore because we need to tear the whole thing apart. Unless it's locked up, which was happening a lot. It was the 486 could not handle a lot of this stuff, so. Okay, all right, that's certainly a very dramatic way of crashing. Um, it goes all hot dog stand on us. And it's still actually playing back as it like undraws just this portion of the screen. There goes another one. And before it will sustain that note because it's not terminated. Oh my god. All right, we got we got lucky, folks. We really got lucky. We almost heard tremolo strings for the next week. Uh, wait a minute. Why are we launching Pro Sound again? I probably pressed enter by mistake and it relaunched it. No! <sighs> Maybe I launched it, quit it, launched it, quit it, launched it, quit it, launched it. Maybe? I don't know. And I will say that these speakers, period correct. I don't know if I've shown them on camera before. They're Bose computer speakers that are magnetically shielded if you're using them with a CRT. In my case, I am not, so it doesn't matter, but uh, these are actually from the 90s. I got them new in box, and they've only been out of the box for a couple of years. I don't know why I didn't do an unboxing video, but I don't know, I'm retarded. So I'm going to power this off, and we're going to start the both teardown and reintroduction process of our new motherboard. So this is the current motherboard. You can see this is the familiar blue um, eject button there. This IDE card and floppy card are not going to be necessary because it's going to have that on the, the new motherboard itself. So first we need to disconnect everything on here. And just as a refresher, we got deck tuck, capture card, sound card, video card, and uh, network card that works in the other motherboard, and this IDE card we won't use. We won't need a AT keyboard adapter anymore. It should have PS2 on it. If it doesn't, I don't care because we still have the adapter. And I might be underpowering the other motherboard because it has three power connectors on it. This one only has two. I've been able to power it up before with less. I'm going to hope that that doesn't become a problem. Me and this desktop card go way back. And it's still kicking. I remember the eBay seller who was trying to sell me this, I think tried to scam me, but uh, I still got it. I don't know why I have pieces of cardboard in here. This all 64 I've had since uh, I was a kid, or my dad did. I remember he had kept it in like an anti-static bag or something. This video card I got uh, per last year from uh, one of the uh, computers I acquired again last year that was uh, closer to like AT type computers, getting close there. Older shit, 486, 386 stuff. Same goes for this, but we don't actually need this. I actually bought more RAM for this online, so I could bring it up to like eight megs, which was like the minimum for Adobe Premiere. And now it's gonna kinda go to waste, cause uh, I don't really, I'm not gonna use this right now, although this is probably my best 46 motherboard. I think it's my only 46 motherboard that I have. So uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of ISA slots there. So now the moment you've all been waiting for the reveal of the new motherboard, and here it is. Well, wait a minute. That looks like a. Uh, I was gonna say PCI car, but that ain't PCI. I mean, there's the RAM, there's processor, two processors, what? And where's the rest of it? There's something missing here. What happened to those IDE thingamajigs? Where are they? Oh. They're on this. Yeah, that's right. If you want to measure surface area, 
it's uh, a little bigger. This actually plugs in oh, shit. to this. Saved a bunch of bottle caps for just this reason. Prop up the board. Plugs in. Well, I still don't have enough room. Plugs in like... Now that's going to crack the board. Crush it. Now, um, this actually did come with a case that would have properly held this. But I don't have it anymore because it was too massive to keep. So, this is kind of a... A look at just what is going on. I don't even think I get the full thing in focus at once. I need to fix my settings there, but as you can see, it has enough slots to accommodate all of our ISA and any PCI needs we might have, which means that we can actually get ourselves to 1024 by 768 at 256 colors. We don't need to mess around with VGA cards. I can go straight to SVGA and uh, we'll be golden. We'll be able to, to have the, again, the ultimate Windows 3.1 DOS machine, whatever you want to call it. Now, you're probably wondering about what's going on with the processors here. Now, it is not actually two processors. It's a Pentium 1 and its coprocessor. Now, when I got this, there was a fan here to cool them. I don't know if that's actually necessary from what I know about Pentium 1s. They don't really need a cooler, just a heat sink. But I'll probably still put a fan there because I'm nervous. As for the RAM, you can see that we have a lot of slots for this type of RAM here. Uh, I only have two sticks of it right now, so uh, that's all we're going to have. But man, we have options for sure. So I guess let's start putting this thing back together. Um, I'm gonna say that I'm a little running out of space here. How am I gonna do this? Maybe like this. That'll probably be the best. Now, the power connectors on the board, there's three of them. I don't know what the third one's for. It could be just for some... Actually, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. <laughs> Before we put all the other stuff in, probably should turn it on first doesn't have a uh, video card. I'll go get the SVGA one. This is the original card that I used in the first build of the Ultimate DOS machine. I think going as far back as 2007, possibly. So... Oops. I'm gonna have to get some bottle caps. I found that the bottle caps help support the board just enough so that the little PCI of this thing doesn't. So, pretty solid. This has a PS2 and an AT keyboard connector and a COM port, so that means that our mouse might work. Now, I could go one step further with the bottle caps and I uh, could use Mighty Putty, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I had assumed that um, there was some sort of power header or something on this. No, there's not. Um, it powers on the same way the other one did. I, for some reason, I forgot that. Here's This is going to be our fan that you're not going to see, actually, because I'm going to put it on the other side of this. Right there, it already has Mighty Putty on it, so it'll stay. You can hook it up with Molex. That's our power switch. It's on. It's got a light on. And there we are. Dual processor configuration detected. It doesn't have an A drive or a C drive. So I can't find it. F2 to go to setup. Unless I can't detect my keyboard. Maybe it froze. I oh, can't detect my keyboard. Maybe that was for a mouse or something. I'll have to switch to the AT keyboard adapter. Yep, detected it then. <laughs> I was able to control delete it. Gotta say, I've never had a uh, motherboard quite like this before. Did it beep? 
I don't think I'm hearing it beep. I, I kind of like that. Now this is going to be very a very similarly aged motherboard to the original. I mean the original Ultimate DOS Machine motherboard, which uh, was a Packard Bell. This is about around the same. So the system date and time, totally fucked. Right now, 1995. But that sort of shows you its age. It's probably the newest old motherboard that uh, I could get my hands on. Don't quote me on that. So now, I'm going to power it back down. And I'm going to plug in everything else. Now I'll say I probably picked a bad angle for the camera because you can't see some of the goodies over here, but this is where the real goodies are going to be. So this is our old video card. We're not going to use that. This is... We don't need the IDE card, so we're just going to start installing cards. God, we're almost done installing cards. Should. I could probably space them out if I really wanted to, to sort of help with airflow because of how much room I now have. There we go. I have three free ISA and three free PCI. Whew, that's nice. This doesn't really even look like a computer anymore. It's just a bunch of shit thrown together. Compact flash card here. Something you won't be able to see because it's actually hidden behind this. So everything I think is plugged in here. The only thing we don't have is we don't have the deck talk card plugged into the sound card. But it doesn't matter. We're not going to mess with that at the moment anyway. So the ultimate shit. The ultimate DOS machine is about to get the biggest boost of speed it's ever had, and we could be seeing the start of a new speed era. That's a good sign. I must have plugged it in the right way. But I didn't plug the IDE one in the right way. Damn it. Okay, let's try it again. Go ahead and eject the disc from there, because I'm pretty sure this is working. Oh, here we go. Uh, great. So I might need to manually enter the information. So, um, Pentium, 90 megahertz Pentium, which is faster than the original. Coprocessor installed. So that's all it is. It's a coprocessor. Um, I don't really know what that helps with, to be honest. But, um, should make it faster, right? Um, you can see how much RAM I have. And it did detect a hard disk of 341 megs. I don't really understand why that's so low. We're going to have to go to the setup to find out. So we can see the fixed disk type is user here. Um, cylinders, heads, tracks. So these are all incorrect. Um, I don't know why it automatically assigned them. It could have been something that this motherboard can do that the other one couldn't, which is probably try and read some default values off of the adapter itself, possibly. I'm not sure. But we can easily fix this problem by just changing the numbers. So cylinders, 993. Unfortunately, this means it won't auto-detect this anymore, and we'll have to put this in every time. But at least it's a more friendly and faster boot-up sequence. Heads, we've got 16 of those. Sectors per track. Or sectors track, sorry. 63, all is 63. Okay. Um, so, see, now it says 512 megs. Or did it always say 512? See, now it's reading it fucking perfectly. But before it didn't, it said like 481, didn't it? So maybe this will fuck it up too. Who knows? Alright. So let's see if we can successfully boot DOS. Starting MS DOS. Oh yeah! Fuck yeah. Well, we're done. That's it. But we need to see how fast Windows 3.1 starts up now. Because when I was a kid, I don't remember it taking very long. And this is, should be even faster. So... Oh, and I can have a CD-ROM drive again. Now that I'm no longer hindered by that old case. Um, that's what this would do, but the reason it's hanging on that is because it can't find a CD drive. I'll be remedying that soon. We can get back to playing stuff like Rayman with CD audio. Now, I'm thinking the reason that's actually taking longer than expected is because it actually sees that there's another IDE channel or something in there. And... Shit, that is actually taking a long time. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We got this far. It's reading it correctly. 
I'll see if I can find a CD drive while it's doing that, in case that we need one to continue. Well, I didn't know it was going to pitch a fit, but I got one here. So, shut it down, hook it up. Okay, now I've got a CD drive installed as well. Starting up. Hey, it passed it because now I have a CD. Alright, that was, that was a bit faster than before. Let's see how fast Windows starts up. Wait, what? Oh yeah, I forgot to put in the network card. <laughs> Probably for the better, because I didn't. I want. I don't want a killjoy here. I don't think it detected the mouse, which is okay because I do have a PS2 spot for a mouse. Worst comes to worst. Still a little slow on a startup. It could be because I have so many things installed now, I guess, and just there's no way getting around it. And then the actual speed was compounded by the fact that it was a 46, or it's just crashed now. I don't know. So. I'm gonna cut the camera. Okay, I am now concerned. We're still at this screen, and it's been, I don't know, because I wasn't timing it, but uh, longer than it when it was on the 486. But we're doing all right, because the biggest hurdles have been crossed. The worst case scenario is I have to reinstall Windows 3.1, which is not a huge deal. Um, some of this may actually be caused by the video adapter. Eh, there's an easy fix for that. So, um, we'll uh, go ahead and do that now, because it probably doesn't like the SVGA card, and that's probably why it's not displaying anything. We might actually be, well, we're not started up yet, because we would have heard a sound, uh, but and usually, sometimes it tells us if it has a problem with the video adapter, but let's go and fix it anyway. I can tell what... It said, no drives found. Okay. CD Windows... CD, CD Windows one Edit system INI. So, display driver. We have svga256.drv. So, we should probably change this to just vga.drv. And I think that's all we need to do. And then it'll just work. Well, ball sacks. We're still stuck at this screen, and I don't know why. Could be any number of things. I doubt that it's anything else other than the new hardware I put in. But it could just be because uh, it was too much of a shock to the system to suddenly be like, holy fucking shit, there's this new coprocessor, I don't know what to do with it. What if it turns out that Windows 3.1 can't handle a coprocessor or something? I've never tried to boot an operating system on this motherboard before. I have no idea. I don't know what the limitations are. Fuck. So... We start it back up. Before we do anything drastic, let's make sure all systems are going right. Make sure everything's right in DOS land. Let's do a test. Even before it blows out my ears. Fuck! Oh god, I probably should have tested this on the other computer before. I don't know if Duke Nukem is broken on this. I can't even control all the lead out of it. And any one of these problems is gonna be damn hard to track down. Is it because too many things got loaded into DOS with the um, auto EXEC bat? Is it because I have too many ISA cards? Is it because it's a coprocessor? Is it because RAM? I've. Jesus. You could be any number of things. This is a mess that has been changed and modified and tweaked again for the past, what, six or so years. Oh my god. All right, well, let's see if I can play Doom. What? Oh, right, that's right. There is no Doom on here. And that probably explains why Duke 3D doesn't work. Hold on. No, that should have more than enough stuff to run it. Yeah, so Doom and Quake, those are on a different hard disk. Um, I still have Rayman. Maybe I don't. I've got Space Adventure, but I don't have the CD. Um, I've got 3D Body Adventure, <laughs> but I don't have a CD. Um, 
Where are my DOS games? This is ridiculous. They're all on the other freaking drive that I don't have anymore because I replaced it with this. So, because I used to have two drives and there was some stuff on one of the other drives. There's no room on this to fit any more games. And the CD doesn't work. Oh, well, does it? Yeah, invalid drive E. Yeah, so the CD drive doesn't work. Shit. Uh, the only other option would be to disconnect this drive and plug in another drive to see if it'll detect it, and then I can uh, get some files off of it so I can uh, play the games, I guess. The old Ultima DOS machine drive is this one. So, this has two partitions the regular boot partition, which is exactly the same as this. And, uh, but if it doesn't get the sectors and stuff right, then it's not going to work. Hopefully it just boots off of my compact flash disk, because it's going to be kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. Alright, so, we'll try this. This should be set to... Single. Drive, because it's on its own IDE channel there. And let's hope it doesn't boot off of it. I'm going to be able to set the boot order with the setup, so I'll just do that instead. And I won't have to worry about it. Okay, so the fist, fifth, 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 fixed disk one. I guess I'll have to manually enter this in just like the other one. Well, that's, that's fantastic. Cylinders 14, 6, 10. What? You can't go more than four digits? The hell not. So you're telling me that this slamming ass Pentium board is not as good as the other one? The 486? You're shitting me. You're shitting me. Uh, well... Uh, well I can't do this with this drive then. Um, how about this one? What was this code? Uh, another 14,000 cylinders, how convenient. Yeah, I can't, I can't even look at it. 7.5 gigs is too big for this motherboard. Oh, uh, great. Alright, so... Uh, I don't know what to do now. Um, the only thing I can think of is to put a DOS game on a floppy disk. Um, fuck. So I managed to get the earliest version of Doom, the Doom 0.2 Alpha version of Doom, because apparently it's small enough to fit on this floppy disk. So it gets past the DOS booting part just fine. Let's go to A. Retry. So let's uh, run the Doom Alpha. Hopefully it doesn't blow out the speakers. Now, this is running off of the floppy disk drive, so it's going to be a little slower, but if there's any problem with uh, any part of this, um, this might not have any sound because of how old it is. But we want to see if something works. Jesus! Okay, this would work better if it was, uh... Oh, that's smooth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's smooth, but, uh... Can't really kill anything. You just kind of walk around. This was only like 200k, so it would fit. Might find another one, but you know, it's kind of obvious that this doesn't have any sound. But I think this is the whole map. There's no, there's no mini map, but there is this. There is no auto map, but there is the mini map. It doesn't show your position on it, but kind of shows off the tech, I guess. What? Ooh. 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 
pressing the arrow key. Oh wait, don't run it again, no! Okay, we're back where we started. <laughs> Can we make it crash again? I think if I just need to walk around enough, I'll make it crash again. Well, there is another way for me to load Doom onto this computer. All I need to do is plug the compact flash card into another machine and uh, load it on. Uh, yeah, that's the advantage of having a compact flash, so why don't I just do that? So apparently my Doom folder was like 130 megs. I had a bunch of mods and every wad of Doom, including the TNT and Plutonia wads. And uh, yeah, it took up a lot of space. There was like a Call of Duty mod in there. It was like a full conversion. So it would not have fit. There was only 120 megs free. So what I put on there now it only takes up like 20 megs. Final spam. Well, Doom one. It's right there. So let's try the Z Doom DOS. Which is uh, Z Doom for DOS. Couldn't open C Z DOS? Adding C Doom Z Doom wad. Okay, so I found the wad. Couldn't open Z Box. Well, that wasn't even in the directory. Adding this. The same file. Oh, ZDoom. Okay. Hmm. Seems to be having some difficulty loading sound stuff. Maybe it is the sound card. If I take it out, will it boot um, Windows 3.1? Because I think it has actually got stuck on the sound part of this uh, on Duke as well, and uh, the other one worked because there was no sound. So if that's the problem, I'll pull the card and see what happens. We might need to reinstall it. Or too many damn things are getting loaded in that auto exe C bad. I don't know. The sound card's out. Now that the sound card's out, maybe we can just play Duke. Couldn't find selected sound cards. It won't play without the sound card unless I use some sort of uh, modifier launch option, interrupt, something, I don't remember the fucking name for it. You know what I mean. I don't know what it is. It might be like dash, no music or something like that, but let's just see if Doom works. Uh, see Doom DOS. That's a different result. I don't see anything. Hey, what do you know? So the sound card was the problem? Well, here's something to think about. Last time, when we had all this stuff plugged in, and by all this stuff, I mean this stuff right here, I had them plugged in a specific order. Now, ISA slots have to uh, be in a certain interrupt, I believe. It's uh, like IRQ 12, 11, something like that. So each one of these um, ISA slots has a different uh, interrupt request. And if you plug the wrong thing in the wrong spot and something else is using that interrupt request, you can be in some sort of big trouble. So, since this started up, I probably had the sound card in a place it wasn't expecting. So, if we think about what it looked like last time, it looked like this. So, the sound card, there's, uh, there's more ISA slots on here than there is here. But the sound card, I would have put deck talk here, I would have took the thing here, and then, or the... So the, the third one here would have been the sound card. Now this doesn't have the same set of interrupts, but I can try to reproduce it by plugging everything in exactly how it was before. But before we do that, let's make sure Doom is playable. Oh shit. Oh god. Uh, I don't have a place to put my mouse. Now Z Doom is a little different than regular Doom because you can actually mouse aim, but it is, I think it just crashed actually. Oh, no. And use WSD right out the gate because it has an INI file that has all those things stored. Now you can kind of do this with the original version of Doom, uh, but it. Ugh. 
Jesus Christ, that's pretty bad. All right, so forget about that for now. Um, could be the video card that's fucking with it. The simplest of things I cannot do with this system, apparently. So uh, let's uh, reorganize the things on the board. See if it works now. Successfully configured the. Oh God! What is that? Why was it making that noise? Oh great! Probably gonna have to move it somewhere else. But let's see if it works first. Looks like it's putting a test tone through. That's where it got stuck last time. Let's see. Yeah, I'm still doing it. Getting stuck on the sound card again. Is my A64 like 64? Is it 32? What the fuck? I don't even know anymore. Maybe it's fucked. Maybe I have to go Sound Blaster 16. If I do, this is a Sound Blaster 16. It won't have uh, all the capabilities that the AW will. But with all the creative software in there, it should be able to detect this. But uh, it really doesn't like it right now. I hope I didn't plug it in there like too loosely. It did feel like it came out a little bit, like it wasn't plugged in all the way. Hopefully that didn't fry it. Uh, let's shut it off again. I'm going to try it in a different slot, but after this, I'm going to actually check the, the interrupts in the BIOS to see what's using what, if it even shows me. So. Okay, well that's just the PCI slots. No, where's my ISA stuff? Does it not give a shit about it? This is just has to do with the on-board stuff. There's nothing in here for the ISA slots like there was on the last motherboard I looked at. Where are all my IRQ shits? Well, I guess we'll just try it as normal. Oh shit, what the fuck? Failure. Uh, no. Yeah, so it works to me. <laughs> Try the setup. Because then we can do the sound setup. Test sound FX card. Well, it's not making that whiny noise anymore. Yep, getting stuck on initialization, it seems. Can I cancel that? No? Oh, it's an R32. Okay. Shit! Um, my card might be bad. I mean, I. Because it's getting stuck on this. Shit, the computer's hard locked up right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, there's a little bit of glue on it, but I don't see any problem. Sound Blaster 16. It already locked up. <laughs> Maybe this sucks. <laughs> I mean, it found the mouse. The light that says processor 2 is not illuminated. I feel like this is slowly getting worse as I use it, because I don't even boot anymore. I can't even get it past the BIOS. Oh, never mind. Um, just needed to wait for it, okay. So we will wait. For as long as it takes. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. I mean, it might be a disagreement between this board and the hardware I'm putting in. Okay, I don't know if shit worked, so... Now, this is where the simple shit is. I think all I need to do is run some little utilities that will make a Sound Blaster 16 work. Um, like for example, SB MIDI will load a driver for any Sound Blaster music thing. So, um, do 
I have some... I don't have the cool sounding minis in here. I did this before on the channel, but I need to play MIDI jazz. Okay, well that's not a big... That's not a big deal, because that would run independently of anything else. Let's see if it runs with Duke now. Um, test music card. Cannot detect all 32. Getting sound cards to work on DOS is a pain in the ass because you have to manually edit batch files and the config sys. I'd rather have an installer do it for me, and then if I ever want to go back or to the other one, then I have to do it all over again, and then if it doesn't actually work, and it's still locking up, then that's just great. Fuck. Well, a little bit of a discovery here. See how it said, before it said failure disk 1, now it says failure disk 0. All that means is nothing's plugged in there. But you might think, well, what does it matter? We've assigned those drives. That's part of the problem, possibly, because if we go to the setup, disk type 1, we, we put an empty user information. That's why we started seeing failure disk 1, because this is disk 1 and we didn't put anything in there. And to compound that, we were expecting a CD drive to work with it. We need to clear this out. Uh, <clears throat> none. Or just set it to automatic. Oh, I'll we'll set that to automatic. I guess I could set the other one automatic. Well, this is where the, the compact flash drive is currently plugged in, so let's see if automatic works. Um, set this one to automatic. There's nothing there. Oh, I can do it from there. Okay. Okay, um, let's try that. See if we can actually find it. Now, this has nothing to do with the sound card, of course. Well, it still has a failure unless you say nothing lives there. And drive zero is bad, so. Um, we gotta shut this down, plug it back into the first spot, even though I don't think it really matters. None. Oh, let's save that stuff. Okay. And, uh... There we go. What the fuck? Why is this one? What? It's it's in there. What do you want? Oh. Is it not pushed in all the way? <gasps> I don't know if it was... And then that message went away after I pressed it in more. Okay, well at least that's accurate. Uh... It was in there mostly. I mean, come on. I didn't just fry my compact flash card. My irreplaceable 512 meg compact flash card. Not coming up with the memory testing. Uh, what happened? Hm. Okay, fine. I'll plug you. What was it? 993. Well, if I can't do the basic shit anymore, then I guess we're fucked and we can't do anything else. Unless I do a total wipe of the compact flash card and start all over again, and then we still have the problem with our auto exe C pad. Okay, so we're looking okay so far. I don't get it. Guess I'm gonna unplug everything and start over. That means no more this shit. I'm gonna unplug it so it loses all of its. Bio CMOS stuff, and we'll come back in a bit. Okay, I unplugged it to come back in here and look at this, and it's CMOS batteries working. What the fuck? Ah! The one time I don't want it to do it. The problem is, is that the CMOS batteries actually integrated into a little box that's soldered to the motherboard. So, <clears throat> can't have set. So instead, we're gonna load. Defaults. And this is still select. What in the fucking hell? Um. Okay, what the. F 
I don't get it. I there's got to be something wrong with my compact flash card at this point. I don't know what it is, but um, I mean, I could delete all this. I mean, I loaded all the default values and everything, and it won't forget them. I can't can't make it forget. Okay, so now the only thing it's looking for is the floppy disk drive. So it doesn't seem to have any issue with that. Okay, no results yet, but does this number look familiar? That's the number we're supposed to see. Remember before when I first set this up that it worked, but it said 512 megs? Now, I switched over to using fixed disk type 1 to enter the user information, which hasn't changed here. Maybe I typoed it and it was 993 and it made it 512? I'm not sure, but 491 should be correct because that's exactly what it was reported as uh, multiple times. At least I think it was. So that means if we exit and save changes, that drive should now become bootable. Now this is just to get us back to square one. We haven't even resolved the sound card problem, but if it was reading from the disk wrong, anything could have gone wrong. I just started to track it to being a sound card issue. Now, of course, it will fail on disk zero. I don't care because we're not on that uh, a channel anymore. Oh, so now that is drive one. Now, I tried running the IDE info thing again, and it could no longer find the disk when it was on channel zero. So I'm going to go to channel one, run that IDE info again, and then see if it finds it on IP channel 2, even if there's a configuration problem with the sectors and stuff. You gotta be shitting me. It's broken. Now what? Okay, so, um, I haven't been working on this for about a day or so. Um, I didn't think to replace the IDE cable. It seems to have fixed the problem. Um, it might still get stuck at this, whatever, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is it's now detecting the drive again. The CMOS battery in this motherboard is totally working, and I can't kill it just by letting it sit around. So, it is remembering all of my settings, which is really convenient, because it means I won't have to set them again. But, uh, holy crap. I think I had it, this might be bad, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I just need to reseat it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um... Fuck, if it doesn't get past that, that's going to be pissing me off. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to now, I've already copied the AW64 software onto this, and I'm going to try and reinstall it, and hopefully that fixes it. This is uh, the config sys file. I'm going to rem this out. I don't even know if rem works, but even if it um, errors on this, it will not run this line. It should keep it from getting stuck. I tried removing a... Thing like that from the uh, auto exec bat but it, that wasn't actually where the problem is i think so uh, let's uh, save this and fuck. all right okay so right now all we have is the all 64 installed i have the install files in here but if there was a problem with the ide cable this whole time and that's what was fucking it up then maybe windows 3.1 will just work or better yet the Duke 3D sound tester will work as well. So let's try that first. Uh, I'll give it a minute. Oh, God damn it. Okay, I've removed the AUS64. We're going to try and reinstall it. The problem is, is the AUS64 installs a bunch of crap and utilities in both the um, auto exe c bat and the Configsys um, stuff. Maybe the setup program will actually help us um, uninstall it. Give us an option for uninstallation. If so, I'll do that, and then we'll switch over to a different sound card that doesn't have the same issues, hopefully. It's uh, much snappier now that we're actually successfully started up. The sound card was keeping it from starting up. We never even tried to start up Windows 3.1 before, but yeah, I took it out, and now we're working. Um, while we're here, since we're on the SVGA card, I can go into main, Windows Setup. Right now we're at the um, old settings we had for our uh, old VGA card. This was a, the maximum we could squeeze out of it. Um, but I think I can get a little bit more risky here.
Let's try it. Well, this means that it worked because I can see it. Hey, how about that 800 by 600, boy? Whoa, look at that screen real estate. Should I get greedy? Oh, I'm already greedy. 1024 by 768, okay. Screw it, all right. So I'll have to go to main, file manager. Wow, I'm not even getting it all on the screen. Oh God, this is so fast. Oh, I could have done this in DOS? Oh my God, I didn't even need to start it up. Well, good news, it's, <laughs> it's better than it was before. Oh man, this is this is smooth. Okay, let's accept that. Audio software installation program. To install audio software now, press enter. What? Is this just the audio software? Let's do custom. Wow, I don't need any of this. Oh, uh, crap. So, what actually installs the driver for the R64? Well, what we could do is we could just try and dig as much as possible out of the config sys and um, auto exe c bet to make a, to make the sound card event non working and then try to get some drivers or set up or use some default settings to get the sound blaster card to work just so we can scrape by with the bare minimum here the there's oh god okay so shit so sound blaster 16 bunch of stuff in here. So it's a load high. Uh, rem. These are pretty universal here. Sound Blaster 16 should be, this all should work. Maybe if I change this, because Diagnose Mixer Set, all this stuff should be universal. I might be able to just get away with just getting rid of um, this alone and leaving everything else the way it is and it'll work as if these are only these are just extra stuff though really um, these aren't even necessary for its functionality this is just extra environmental effects like the mixer set like for reverb and chorus and stuff like that I don't even need these at all so I'll just I guess I can leave those in there since there's a, they're coming out of Sound Blaster 16, not an AW directory. This is the only AW thing there is. Well, I'm gonna shut it down and put a Sound Blaster 16 in it and see what happens. So according to this, it still thinks my music card is the AW32. Well, let's choose a different one. Everything's just set to Sound Blaster now. Fuck! Maybe I should stop using Duke 3D as like my benchmark for sound. It's not even correctly detecting the AW32. It's just, it's an AW64, not a 32. Let's see if uh, Windows will start up. Moment of truth! That's the bad. It would have done something by now. So it is the presence of a sound card. Why would it be doing that? I don't know. I mean, we could we could definitely use this computer without a sound card, but uh, it would suck ass. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna have to modify the auto exe c bat again and see if we can uninstall the sound card. It won't let me control alt delete. Fucking hell. See how it says set sound, set blaster, set MIDI synth. So map G mode one. So this is where our stuff is. I'm never gonna figure this out, okay? For as long as I live, this is fundamentals of DOS right here. Figuring out how to set up your damn sound card, and I still can't fucking figure it out. I know the A220, I know this is interrupt five, direct memory access is on. Don't know what this is, I forgot what this is. Um, but I mean, come on, this is, I'm going to rim it. I'm going to rim it all. And then I'm going to get myself a Sound Blaster install floppy and let it take care of all this crap. Actually, I could probably do a rem start and a rem end, but oh well. 
Does, can, does that even work in a batch file? Now it should work with the sound card physically present. Fuck, I forgot to fix the config sys file. Jesus. Uh, wait, I need that one. Hold up. Alright, fucking better work now. So basically, the stand. Oh, I can't reach it. Oh my god. Are you serious? Okay, we're just doing the rest of the video like this. Hey, fucking A. There, much better. That was it. The line can fix this. Kept it from booting. So it's how the sound card is configured, not necessarily what sound card it is. So from this point forward, um, I have a whole bunch of AW64 software that I'm not going to be able to use unless this is installed. So if I do switch to a, uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's a problem there. So I mean, I I'm faced with either a really big installation or because um, yeah, I don't know if you want to look at just how many things are in here. Because if I look at uh, you know, audio software, look at all this shit. I'm gonna install all that again. Is that it? I mean, fine, sure, I could do that, and hopefully it install reinstalls the driver. And then it will be custom tailored to this motherboard. And I won't be able to use it with anything else without having to go through this whole ordeal all over again. But I think we finally made some progress. We can do something. So that begs the question, does the Duke 3D sound test now work and will automatically install a driver for us to test it? I have no idea. All i got to say is this is the best motherboard for Windows 3.1 I've ever used. Ooh, is it tasty. There we go. Hey! Look at that! It didn't crash. It didn't crash. Yeah, okay. Um, that's just because it's not configured at all. So, consistency with our problem. Alright, uh, we're gonna see if I, I'm gonna see if I can get the all 64 reinstalled. Okay, so I was actually reading the manual for the all 64. Crazy, I know, right? And uh, there's a program in here called Diagnose. I should have been using this one instead. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. Auto scan. Call a technical support line. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. If the auto scan can't find anything available, Current base I.O. Okay, so hold on. Let me switch to this. If all the available base I.O. addresses settings have been tried unsuccessfully, then call the technical support line. I can't even select any of these. None of these are available. So that means that something else on this board is using my damn I.O. addresses. And I can try and look at the BIOS to see if there's anything I can do. Disable the parallel port, serial port 1 and 2, in case they're using a any I.O. addresses? I'm probably mixing up interrupt requests and I.O. addresses, but uh, I always do my best work off camera. So this is the same diagnostic utility you saw before. As you can see, it succeeded. I've changed nothing except... Um, oh, it's going to test everything first. But I ran one of the executable files that usually starts at startup. And it initializes the card and now makes it detectable by the uh, diagnostic tool here. So it's going through everything to see what kind of settings I'm going to need to set up. And then I can slowly unrem things from the auto exec bat until, and potentially can fix this file until it works. We're, I'm going to let it go through this and see if it finds any problems. So it's freezing up at the testing IRQ phase. 
This would imply that if it's looking for interrupt request 5, which is usually either LPT2 or a sound card, that could be the problem. Those of you who probably could have guessed from its size, yes, it is a server motherboard. So for servers, there really wouldn't be too much usage for sound cards. So um, if they reutilized uh, IRQ5 for something else, it's going to fight us every step of the way here. So that means we would have to reassign it to something unassigned, such as interrupt request 10, or at least one that's normally unassigned. Now, since we have a whole bunch of other bullshit going on with this board, it could be that uh, we have to uh, play it by ear. Now, there's only so many interrupt requests, and uh, as you can see, it had no problem with the I.O. address here. There's, there's IRQ's direct memory shits, there's a third thing, and I don't really remember what it is, but it's getting stuck here. This test should have already been completed. Uh, ooh, oh, that's not good. Alright, uh, five? Here's that directory I found earlier. If I try to do diagnose right now, press enter, it can't do anything. But if I run CTCM, it's the Creative Plug and Play Configuration Manager, which finds my sound card. And then it sets the environment to this automatically. So it doesn't really give me a choice. It always sets the interrupt request 5, no matter what. So how do I change that? Well, theoretically, I could plug this value in here with uh, a different card and see if this value changes. Since this seems to be the jack of all trades Sound Blaster directory, all Sound Blaster cards should be activated using this set of software. So let's switch it back to the Sound Blaster 16 and see if it looks any different. Again, CTCM. Nothing. Nothing? That's it? CTCU? the hell is this? This is magic. Holy shit. But it's also locked up the system. What is going on? <laughs> Why does anything plug and play related, anything that scans the interrupt request, freeze the computer without fail? I don't know. Is this bad RAM or something? I mean, I'm at a loss here, but it is specific to those issues. Everything else works fine. If it was a bad RAM issue, I wouldn't be able to load in Windows at all because it takes up way more room than this shit. So... Control delete. Control alt delete doesn't fucking work. And now the board isn't posting. I didn't try to remove the card while the computer was on, did I? Shit, I can't remember. And it's still not posting, even with the uh, 64 removed. Well, that's uh, a cause for concern. <laughs> guess who's an idiot? I'm an idiot. And guess what? I, I just looked on the board. There's a jumper that says CMOS clear. So I pulled it out, started it up, and it went through a boot loop, a post loop, of just constantly clearing its... So now I've put the jumper back in. And we'll see if the... Uh... As you can see, we're back. Um, it retested the RAM. Um, it's, it says the checksum is bad, so we'll go into the setup. I do not have the AW64 plugged in right now. We'll go to setup. It will control delete. EISA configuration and VRAM bad. And it really does not like today. <laughs> Holy shit. Default values will be loaded, okay. Hey, now we're back to square fucking one. <laughs> I guess it auto-detected that. Very good. That's fine by me. Um, now will it boot normally? still start up. Let me shut it off. Install this demon. 
If there's any weird setup with the SEMA, this is something I should have done at the fucking beginning. But if there was any problem anywhere in the setup that was fucking up this sound card from working, now I'm going to have to put everything back and fix it. Well, that hasn't changed. Detected. Hey! Yeah, baby! fix when I fix everything else. 16-bit testing. Set blaster. Aha! H5. H5. Okay, so they're they're exactly the same. So I'll rem this but then put all this back to normal. Okay. Did it not modify this? Let's give it a shot. Let's just see if Windows can be started. Shit. Wait. Dude, we did it. We fixed the problem, man. Oh, shit. Oh my god. Did you realize how fucking long this took? And it was all because my fucking CMOS shit was fucked. Oh god, it's gonna be loud. It's like 12 in the morning. Denied. <laughs> That's success. We succeeded. It works. I don't believe it. Can I open the MIDI file? Hey, fuck off. Fucking works. So the only thing left that needs to be tested now is the deck talk card and the capture card. And Duke 3D works with sound. Where's the damn music? Well, I don't know what the music is, but that's good enough. That's problem solved, at least. I don't even know where to plug these things in anymore. Like, I don't know what sort of weird interrupt shit is going on, or what. Because I'll put this on the bottom, because fuck if I know what's best for this. Alright, they're all spread out. Oh my god, do I need to reset the CMOS again? <laughs> Every time I add new... Okay, so apparently it said something about EISA. Um, its NVRAM was bad. So if I reset the CMOS, it resets the NVRAM for the EISA. The EISA is kind of a newer, cooler version of ISA. And uh, I think that may have been what fucked up and what saved my ass when I reset it. So I could reset it again, and then we're back, back to normal, I guess. Got the jumper out. Now resetting itself. We'll do it a couple times. Power it off. Replace the jumper. Looks good. 
F2 to enter setup. Auto detect. That's snazzy. You ran bad. Don't care. Starting to install. Start Windows. Oh, I forgot to install the network card. Oh well. Uh oh, the speakers are turned up. Oh, denied. View for Windows. Video cap. Oh no. Is all my video software on another fucking drive? I don't have VidCap anywhere on here. Ugh. I'm just gonna pray that it works. Well, the only other thing I can test, you know, just because I'm running out of time, is the DeckTalk card. DeckTalk card does have audio out, so I'm gonna plug the DeckTalk card directly into the speakers, but I think it just totally, absolutely ear rapes everything when it plays stuff back. Should be something called DT Bat. Which initializes it. Deck Talk PC version 4.1c is running. Alright, so thank you. So everything else is working. The only thing I don't have is the fucking um, VidCap software that can show me what the fuck is going on because it's on the other hard drive because there wasn't enough space. And now I am going to piss myself trying to find it. Um, and then I'll shut this down, plop it on there. When video, vid cap. Video source. There we go. Oh shit, I just poked the deck talk card. Full resolution, yes! Yes! Yes, it all still works! Except for the network card, that wasn't actually booting with Windows, so um, we're not going to touch that right now. We're at pretty much 100% operating capacity. Um, this, I mean, nothing's moving, because I, I didn't put a controller, but I'll show you. I'll, I'll turn it off and turn it back on again, and then the same thing comes up. So, capture card's working. Deck talk's working. 1024 by 768 is working. The Creative All 64 is working with a dual processor. Fucking computer. The ultimate DOS machine rises again and is now truly worthy of the title. The only thing left is for me to still browse the fucking internet with this thing. Maybe next time. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.